Hi, it's Steph, and today I'm going to do a couple of odds and ends in the yard, and I figured I would take you along. Um, the first thing I wanted to share with you is that um, recently in one of my Lowe's Garden Center tours, I had seen um, an Ito Peony Cora Louise. It was by Monrovia, and it was absolutely beautiful. However, it was $119, and I just couldn't get myself to do it. So when I got home, I couldn't stop thinking about it, and I Googled, and I was able to find that Longfield Gardens... Longfield Gardens online um, was carrying them and they were marked down. They were like, I'm not sure if they were 50% off or more, but they were really inexpensive. Um, let's just say for two Ito Peony tubers, I paid just around $50, which um, was a great deal. Now, of course, the one at Lowe's was a plant and it was established and it would bloom this year. Um, so I will have to wait maybe a couple of years for these to bloom, but the cost savings was tremendous. And the tubers, I took a peek at them and they're really healthy looking. So the ones that I got were the Cora Louise, which was the one I saw at Lowe's that I really wanted. And I also picked up a Julia Ann. So, um, Julia Rose, I should say. So this is the Julia Rose and the tubers look great. It says on the bag that they should have three to five eyes. And when you look at this, you can see that there's certainly a few eyes. I haven't opened it yet to actually count, um, but there's a lot of healthy growth. And this one here is the um, Ito Peony Cora Louise. And the Cora Louise also has quite a few growth points on the eyes here. So I was really happy with these. Um, I am going to pot grow them for a few weeks until um, the area that we want to put them in. I want to place them in an area that still has some sod down. So we have to lift that sod before I can plant them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pot, pot them for a couple of weeks and then we'll plant them out when the area is prepped. Um, the other thing that I wanted and I ended up ordering on a whim, I had already hit my shipping, minimum free shipping limit, but I had planted out my dahlias this week um, and there were two on my wish list that I hadn't bought and I had already kind of reached my budget for the year for dahlias. So, um, you know, I wasn't planning on it, but they had them available. They were marked down. They were under $10 a piece for three tubers. So I went ahead and did it. One of them is the Dinner Plate Dahlia Thomas Edison. So the bag feels pretty heavy, which is good. It's a good sign. It means that the tubers are, are not dehydrated. And when I was kind of moving them around, um, I could tell that a lot of them already had eyes, which is also another good sign. It's showing active growth. And the other Dahlia that I picked up was the HS, the single HS date, which is a really pretty like, um, like an apricot color, like orange. Um, I'll pop a picture up on the screen. But anyway, I purchased this one also, there's three tubers. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant out the Dahlia tubers. Um, I have one other Dahlia from Walmart that I bought that I need to get in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove some bok choy that is bolting. Bolting just means that it's now going, going to flower because I need the real estate. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that bok choy. I'm gonna plant some tubers there. I have most of my stakes up already. Now, I did plant my dahlias really intensely, meaning I only gave them maybe 10 to 12 inches a piece, um, but I'm kind of limited on space to just this raised bed garden. And so now I'm, you know, dubbing this my potage because I'm growing vegetables and flowers um, in the same space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, you know, try to uh, keep them as staked as possible to kind of get them growing upward in their allotted space and hope for the best. So yeah, let's go ahead and get that done. And here I'm gonna plant the Thomas Edison. So here's my Thomas Edison, and we'll look at these together. We'll see what the tubers look like. Okay, so it's a nice clump. Here we go. So this is what you're looking for. You kind of inspect the tuber, and it's so tiny I keep losing it, but I can see right in here, right in here, you can see that there is eyes emerging. So that's good. So that's tuber number one. There should be three in here. Here's number two. 
Yep. And this one is a little more obvious right there. And number three has active growth. So that's easy to tell. So we're going to go ahead and plant these. Now the way that I plant my dahlias is that I just dig a hole and then I add bone meal to the hole and then I just cover them up. And I try to go down about six inches, but that's kind of a loose guesstimate to be honest. Um, as long as they're deep enough where I can get a good amount of soil on top, I don't worry about it too much. So I'm just going to dig a hole. Oh, some gnarly roots there. And I'm going to plant all three here in this corner. Here's the bone meal that I'm using. It's just stay green. Um, I got it at Lowe's. And what I do is I just insert this in each of the dahlia holes and it's supposed to aid in root development. I really should be wearing my gloves, but I forgot them and I, my spare pair that I keep in my mailbox made its way into the shed. So I have to get that, get those back. But I just take the tuber and sometimes um, there's a little stem from where it was cut off last year. And so you know that that is the top, but when you don't know, like right here, um, but when you don't know, you kind of just place them and they'll find their way to the surface. But I'm going to go ahead and place it in the hole this way. Here's the other one. You can see that stem. So I'm going to place it like that. And then you just backfill them. You cover them back up. This is my oregano that I cut back in my um, vegetable garden planting the other day when I was doing my spring crops. And look how much it's flushed out already in just a couple of weeks. It looks beautiful. Now, the other thing you wanna do when you plant your dahlias is you wanna insert your stakes pretty much immediately because that way you kind of know where the tubers are and where to place them. Now there is earwigs in this bed. I can already see them so they're going to be a problem for me so I might have to put down some uh, diatomaceous earth. I never say that right but in any case I might have to put some of that down um, as a preventative measure so that once this foliage starts emerging on my dahlias they don't start getting eaten and attacked right away. Last year I had a lot of deformed petals on my um, dahlias from earwigs. So here are the stakes that I'm going to use. They're just bamboo stakes. These happen to be six feet tall. Now this Thomas Edison supposedly only gets about 40 inches, so about four feet, but it's a dinner plate, so it's going to need some support. But they have really large blooms, dinner plate dahlias. So if you put the stakes in as soon as you plant your tubers, you know where the tuber is located and this way you don't risk damaging any of its roots. Um, if you wait until later, once the foliage has emerged, it's already put out roots and then you know you risk more um, of putting your stake in and disturbing those roots. And the last step is going to be to insert a tag so that you know what dahlia you planted in what spot. So here is the Dahlia single HS date. So let's check these out. Yep, this one has a lot of growth points, so that's a good one. Active growth. So far two out of three looking good. And number three. 
you can fish through the bag because sometimes you know there's extra tuber pieces um, if they have an eye on them then you know it would be safe to plant them but if they don't most likely they're not going to be viable so you can kind of discard them or you can throw them in dirt and see what happens okay one last thing to do to the dahlias and that is top them with these cute little terracotta pots so a few months ago when it was end of winter beginning of spring the dollar tree had just put these out i got them at the dollar tree so for a pack of three of these mini terracotta pots it was a dollar i know the dollar tree is a dollar 25 now but it was still a dollar then and i'm gonna um, go ahead and place these on the top of my dahlia stakes but they also serve a purpose and i had done a little bit of research about earwigs and one of the videos that i watched actually on youtube and if i can find it i will link it below a person had um, used these with straw inside them and what that does is that the earwigs will go ahead and climb into that straw and they kind of get stuck there so it becomes like um a, like a trap for the earwigs and you're supposed to go in there periodically and clean them out, probably daily, but I'll be honest, I probably will not do it daily. Um, but as often as I can remember, and if it works, it'll be really helpful because last year I had a lot of earwig damage on the petals to my beautiful dahlias. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot and I think it'll look really cute too. So this is what they look like and I bought like maybe six or seven packages, so let's put them on. they are they look so cute I didn't have enough for all of them so I just did every other and I mostly stuck to the ones that were flatter on top because some of the bamboo sticks are a little bit crooked you know just the way that the, it's a natural material so some of them are perfect and that's what I did so I figure if some of these trap earwigs it's better than none of them trapping them but I also think it adds a very nice decorative touch That's it for tonight. Thanks for hanging out while I finish up my dahlias and I'll catch you in the next one.